I like to take pictures of dogs because dogs are sympathetic creatures. They're everywhere and they have human characteristics. Besides that, they don't ask for prints. Uh, they uh, don't mind being photographed for the most part, although once a dog peed on my leg. Among the celebrated photographers of the 20th century, no other photographer became as well known for his sense of humor and witty images commenting on the world as much as Elliot Erwitt. Erwitt's images often brought smiles and sometimes outright laughter to viewers by creating delightful moments through his visual wit and puns. Erwitt usually joined seemingly different elements to make spontaneous flashes of comedy. Creating an informal style that was uniquely his own, Erwitt became an uncanny observer of others. Highly sensitive and perceptive to the visual surprises in life, Erwitt possessed a deep appreciation of the moment and was skillful at capturing it. Over a remarkably varied, peripatetic career spanning more than 70 years, Erwitt captured numerous famous images, ranging from the somber Jacqueline Kennedy clutching the flag from her husband's coffin at his funeral, to the glamorous Marilyn Monroe, Marlena Dietrich, to the absurd, a glowing Coca-Cola machine amid a display of missiles in Alabama. Originally a photojournalist, Berwick published more than 20 books during his lifetime, and starred in numerous solo exhibitions at institutions such as, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Art Institute of Chicago, the Musée d'Art Moderne in Paris, and the Barbican in London. He is also known for his many witty photographs of dogs, often from their perspective and distinct from their owners. Erwitt never specialized and worked as a freelancer throughout his life, taking on assignments in fashion, politics, and celebrity. One of his most famous images is of the then Vice President Richard Nixon, poking the Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev in the chest, in 1959, during the so-called kitchen debate at a Moscow exhibition of American products. Some of his more recognizable work came from exploring New York, where he lived on the Upper West Side for 60 years. Erwitt photographed the city with a sense of adventure and spontaneity, living by his famous adage, the best things happen when you just happen to be somewhere with a camera. In essence, Elliot Erwitt's legacy is not merely confined to the confines of a single genre or subject matter, it is a testament to the boundless curiosity and unbridled creativity that fueled his lens. As an artist who defied categorization, Erwitt's photographs serve as timeless windows into the multifaceted tapestry of the human experience. With an unwavering dedication to capturing the essence of the moment, he seamlessly wove together the profound and the whimsical, leaving an indelible mark on the world of photography. 
His lens, ever perceptive and attuned to the heartbeat of life, continues to resonate with audiences globally, inviting them to share in the joy, irony, and beauty that defined Elliot Erwitt's extraordinary vision. Elliot Erwitt was born Elio Romano Erwitz in Paris, France, on July 26, 1928, to Jewish-Russian immigrant parents, Eugenia and Boris Erwitz. Erwitt moved to the United States in 1939 at the age of 10. He began his photography and filmmaking studies, at Los Angeles City College and after finishing his education, he was drafted into the Army. His first contact with photography, was helping to produce signed images of famous movie stars. The year between graduation and the new Army draft, he worked as a photographer's assistant in the U.S. Army while stationed in France and Germany. During this period, he met some of the greatest photographers of the time such as, Edward Steichen, Robert Kappa, and Roy Stryker who heavily influenced his work. It was Stryker who gave Erwitt his next job on a photography project, for the Standard Oil Company, where his job was to build a photographic library, and later take on a project documenting the city of Pittsburgh. After the Standard Oil Company, he continuously started working as a freelancer for many other companies. This experience gave Erwitt valuable insight into advertisement photography, and it was the first step in creating his own approach. He became a member of Magnum, by being invited by its founder, Robert Kappa, who alongside Steichen and Stryker admired his ability for off-the-cuff shooting. This talent is the basic element of Bresson's decisive moment, one which Bresson himself thought couldn't be learned. Being able to create valuable images without any heavy preparation, opened the doors for Erwitt, and as time went by, more and more people reached out to him. While joining Magnum Photos, he also began to work for Collier's, Look, Life, Holiday, and many other magazines. Even after 50 years, he continued to work on various journalistic and commercial projects, capturing moments through his photos. Being a member of Magnum since 1953, he worked with many other great photographers such as Henri Cartier-Bresson. Besides photography, Erwitt also began making film documentaries, with Arthur Penn, the director from 1970 being his first one. He also worked as a cinematographer, producer, and as a camera operator for the documentary Gimme Shelter, which depicted the life of the Rolling Stones. Nevertheless, Berwitt was still best known for his warm and humorous images of common people found in their daily routines. His keen sense of observation enabled him to show how even the smallest things in life had a story to tell. One of the interesting elements of his career was an atypical passion for photographing dogs, which Erwitt took as his personal work. The biggest proof, besides the continuous shooting which spans over several decades, is four books on the topic of dogs, Son of a <laughs> Dog Dogs, Wolf, and Elliot Erwitt's Dogs. Although Erwitt himself described canine photography as his favorite pastime, it was more than just a way to spend free time. Like most of his photography, it was there to entertain, and unlike most of his predecessors, it didn't have to be raw and deadly serious. What made Erwitt stand out, was his ability to stand shoulder to shoulder with great photographers such as Steichen or Kappa, despite the fact his photography was more humorous in comparison to the serious tone that could often be found among Magnum members. Elliot Erwitt's work, proved that professionalism and humor, could go together. Even though his approach might have been seen as comedic, the only element that fulfilled his work more than humor was quality. Since the early 1970s, Erwitt had a high interest in movies. Although he is mostly known for his photography, his approach towards film had no less passion than his famous work. Erwitt also worked as a still photographer for one of Martin Scorsese's documentaries, Bob Dylan, No Direction Home. When it comes to his own work, There's Beauty Knows No Pain, a documentary about an all-female dancing and marching team, and Red, White, and Bluegrass, another documentary on the topic of North Carolina musicians. One of his more famous filmmaking works, is the award-winning Glassmakers of Herat, a film that portrays the glassmaking practice in Herat, Afghanistan. 
Besides this, Berwitt also did numerous works on commercials and programs for HBO. Thanks to his affiliation with Magnum, he had constant opportunities to document film production for movies such as On the Waterfront and The Seven Year Itch, where he managed to create some of the most iconic images of the famous actor Marlon Brando. Work like this enabled Elliot Erwitt access to notable world figures of the time. As time went by, he photographed Jacqueline Kennedy, Fidel Castro, Che Guevara, Jack Kerouac, and Marilyn Monroe. It's probably no wonder that one of the first notable Erwitt's photographs is a dog photograph. A small, stylishly dressed chihuahua gives an intriguing look as it stands beside a female pair of feet. Photographs like this or the one where Richard Nixon is poking Nikita Khrushchev have cemented their place in history as Elliot Erwitt's photographs. But there are many pictures made by Erwitt which just have an equal level of fame, if not higher. The interesting thing about them is they've become so famous and used in books, they lost all contact with their creator. Photographs such as the one from Provence, France, where a young boy can be seen driving on a bicycle with another person and two French pieces of bread tied at the back. This photograph was used on so many t-shirts, cups, book covers, wallpapers, it lost all ties to Erwitt. It's safe to presume more people know the photograph than the photographer. After more than half a century of work, the best case scenario that one might have expected for an artist would have been stagnation, but Erwitt thought otherwise. As he entered the 21st century, Erwitt's popularity and reputation continued to grow, both in artistic and advertising circles. In 2011, Erwitt was recognized through a large scale retrospective exhibition titled Elliot Erwitt personal best, which was held at the International Center for Photography. Following the exhibition, he received the ICP Infinity Award for Lifetime Achievement. The same could be said for his work in advertisement photography. Even in his old age, Berwitt was still a heavily active photographer, whose services were sought by many. Berwitt's work could be found in more than 20 published books, and some of the most notable exhibitions, were held at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, the Museum of Modern Art, New York, and the Chicago Institute of Art. He was also awarded the Outstanding Contribution to Photography Award in 2015, by the World Photography Organization, the Leica Hall of Fame Award, and the Photo of the Year 2023. Elliot Erwitt passed away at the age of 95 on November 29, 2023, in New York, United States.
As we delve into the work of this great photographer, we encounter not only an artist but a master weaver of moments, a maestro of the unexpected, and a chronicler of the human experience. Elliot Erwitt, with his lens as a brush, painted a world that resonated with laughter, irony, and profound beauty. His photographic symphony, composed over seven remarkable decades, resonates with an unwavering dedication to capturing the heartbeat of life. Through Erwitt's lens, the ordinary became extraordinary, and the mundane transformed into a visual sonnet. It's not merely about the photographs themselves, it's about the stories they tell, the emotions they evoke, and the timeless connection they forge between the artist and the observer. Erwitt's lens wasn't just a tool, it was an extension of his keen observation, an instrument through which he invited us to see the world as he saw it, filled with unexpected charms and fleeting moments. As we reflect on his prolific career, spanning from the glamorous to the absurd, from iconic political moments to the fantasy of dogs caught in spontaneous poses, we witness the kaleidoscopic diversity of life through his eyes. He wasn't limited to a single genre, he was a visual poet wandering through the realms of fashion, politics, celebrities, and the quiet moments that often go unnoticed. Erwitt's legacy extends beyond the confines of a gallery or a museum. It is woven into the fabric of our collective memory, engraved in the visual vocabulary of generations. His photographs are more than images, they are windows into the soul of humanity, capturing laughter, struggles, and the poignant beauty that defines our existence. In the ever-changing panorama of art, Berwitz's work stands as a timeless testament to the power of storytelling through visuals. He didn't just freeze moments in time, he breathed life into them, giving us a front-row seat to the theater of the human condition. As we navigate the sea of his photographs, each frame whispers a narrative, a story of joy, a tale of surprise, a chapter of reflection. His images are a reminder that, in the hustle and bustle of life, there is beauty in simplicity, humor in the unexpected, and profundity in the fleeting seconds that define our journey. Elliot Erwitt's lens was a bridge between worlds, the tangible and the ephemeral, the light-hearted and the profound. His ability to seamlessly blend the whimsical with the serious, the everyday with the extraordinary, speaks to a profound understanding of the human spirit. Elliot Erwitt teaches us to find beauty in the unexpected, to embrace humor in our lives, and, above all, appreciate the fleeting moments that weave the intricate tapestry of our existence. May the echoes of Erwitt's photographs inspire us to live with our eyes wide open, ready to capture the poetry of life that unfolds in the most ordinary and extraordinary of moments. As the shutter clicks and the world continues to spin, Elliot Erwitt's legacy lives on, an eternal ode to the art of seeing, appreciating, and celebrating the extraordinary within the ordinary. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. This way, you'll always stay up to date with all the videos I produce here. Until the next one. See you later.